Now, early this morning, we heard from Colin Firth about his latest film, The Railway Man, and how difficult it was to play a prisoner of war who was tortured by the Japanese. In the film, the younger version of Colin's character, Eric Lomax, is played by Jeremy Irvine, who arguably had the even more difficult job of actually portraying those scenes of torture themselves. Jeremy is with us now. Very good morning Hi. to you. Thanks for having me. How thank are you? you. I'm very well, thank you. We, we have, it is undeniable that this is harrowing material. And yeah. if you are, just to sort of explain the sequence, Colin Firth plays Eric Lomax as an older man. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, the film goes back in time yeah. to revisit the horrors that happened to him as a young man. Absolutely. Captured by the Japanese yeah. and then put in extreme situations. Yeah, I mean, so much so that, you know, we couldn't even really show um, the whole story, really, because it just would have been... You know, no one would have wanted to see the film. So, uh, you know, we've kind of, you know, it's, I mean, I think for, you know, myself and Colin, you know, when you read the scripts, the first thing we kind of thought is, you know, you're kind of acutely aware this isn't just a character that, you know, a writer's come up with in their bedroom. You know, this is, this is a real person. And, you know, both me and Colin got to know Eric quite well and, you know, kind of, you know, we felt a real responsibility to it. So, yeah. And you had to do some fairly extreme things as part of the performance, didn't well, you? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, I always, always get a bit nervous about this because, you know, I, hearing actors saying, oh, they suffered for a role and stuff, you know, at the end of the day, you go home to your hotel. But, um, you know, I certainly did stuff that um, I wouldn't normally do for a role, I suppose. And, you know, kind of, you know, like a lot of weight loss. And then, yeah. you know, we also had to shoot, um, these torture scenes and sort of waterboarding and you know it was, there was ways that we we kind of you know there was a way that we could have done it with a mask and oxygen tubes to cut the nose and things and you kind of could have faked it but you know it was it wasn't really an option I think you know that would have been me making it up that would have been me kind of just imagining what it would have been like where actually you know doing it for real was I think what we, you know kind of what we had to do, we had to do and presumably you're, you're mindful the whole time I mean, you're 23 years old now yeah. I don't know how old Eric Lomax was when it actually happened to him but maybe a similar age well he was actually younger than me you know he was, in, he was about 20 yeah. Um, so yeah you know it's, it's you know it's, it's one of those extremely humbling experiences that's kind of stuck with me um, for a long time after finishing the movie you know you really kind of you know, it's one of those things where if you ever come back from a day's work, you think you've had a tough day, you know? Mm. <laughs> Should we take a quick look at yeah, you in great. action you. as the young Eric Lomax right now? But sometimes a railway is simply too difficult to build. But it's hundreds of miles to Burma through mountains and jungle. The British decided that to build such a railway, it would be an act not of engineering, but of extreme barbarity and cruelty. And conditions would be such that those who did not die might well wish that they had. But to build such a railway, you'd need more than just poor immigrants. So you'd need an army of slaves. Well, you just become that army. We are not slaves. We are soldiers. You remember that. He is quite an interesting hero, isn't he? Because he's not your typical kind of Absolutely. strong yeah, leading well, man type hero. I mean, this is what I find so moving about the story. You know, Eric was a train spotter, you know, and I mean, he's kind of what, I guess what we call a bit of a, you know, he's kind of got this nerdy quality, which, um, you know, we see that kind of trying to do that with, a, with the voice and my Terrible Colin Firth impression, but um, you know it's uh, yeah. I, I think there's something very moving about someone who's you know it's what I find very fascinating about the period. You've got ordinary people. You know Eric was working in the post office and then thrown into the worst circumstances imaginable. And it's um, yeah. I think that's what makes his story so special. I mean I you know I still can't get through the book without without crying. And it's mm. really. And away from the storyline itself, and that's a curious thing you, you alluded to there, which is on the one hand you're playing someone who was alive at the beginning of the making of the yeah. film, Eric Lomax, yeah. and then the person who plays your older character, Colin Firth, is clearly there, yeah. and, and you're yeah. sort of caught in, in the middle. Are you trying to sort of... Well, you have to kind of, like, you kind of, um, you know, you think about making, you know, making Eric, and there were certain qualities you wanted to get from Eric, and then, of course, there's also, you want to make that transition as smooth as possible. So, you know, I have blue eyes, Colin has brown eyes, so we tried... Colin with, with my blue eyes, which kind of ended up with looking a bit like a vampire. So <laughs> <I had laughs> that to, didn't uh, work. So I went with brown eyes, and then I wanted to take a few mannerisms and things. And so yeah. you are actually quite like Colin Firth in that clip. Is that something you worked on? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But um, you know, well, it's great because you know, as 
What's funny with when you work in film is, you know, it's not like theatre where you get three months to rehearse and then you, you know, with all the actors. Film, most of the time, you're going away with the script, doing all the work yourself. It's kind of quite lonely. Like, you're doing all the work yourself, turn up on the first day and you shoot it. And it might be the first time you've met the actor or the actress. Mm. Whereas with this, I got to kind of, I got to share that with someone. And, you know, Colin was incredibly generous and, you know, didn't have to let me in on his process. But, you know, invited me around his house and we just spent a long time rehearsing his living room and stuff like that. And, you know, if we had an idea, I could just phone him up and be like, hey, what do you think of this? And, you know, it's probably rubbish, but, um, you know, but it's kind of... Most, most actors are very good mimics. I mean, I've interviewed quite a few actors who do very good impersonations of other You should stars. see my one of you. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah, on, no, it's, uh, <laughs> so, but Colin Firth, yeah. like, strangely, though, is, I would imagine he's quite a hard person because he, he's sort of quite flat in his delivery. And... <laughs> well, it's funny. My little brothers always say I have bum lips, whereas uh, Colin has got thin nice. lips. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, you, know, well, you get Not what you two, can do about that. Two younger brothers <laughs> saying, so, you know, so I spent a long time kind of working on He's this. He's got a small mouth. mouth. You know, it's a That's and, it. Uh, you know, and sort of doing stuff like that. So, um, you know, but it's funny. And, you know, when I was just getting into movies, you know, Colin was winning his Oscar. So it's kind yeah. of, uh, it really was a case of getting to work with someone who you've kind of grown up admiring their work. So, yeah. Jeremy Irvine, lovely to talk to you. Thanks so much. Good Thank luck you. with the film. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Railway Man is in cinemas, 10th of January.